I have to say, I'm a little bit scared to give this talk. You should. <laughs> Number one, exactly, in front of you. Number one, I didn't read those Russian books, even though I'm going to discuss about magnetic symmetries. OK, so sorry, I didn't read that Russian book. Uh, where is uh, Alexei? OK, there we are. Sorry about that. That's number one. <laughs> number two, this is uh, I'm, I'm no more young man, but giving very first time talk without showing one single my own data, experimental data. I'm supposedly experimentalist. So I'm doing kind of a semi-theory uh, talk on symmetries. So that's why I'm scared in front of these great theorists. So I am scared. Mm -hmm. Number three, so again, uh, this topic is the very first time I'm giving this topic talk so that uh, probably there are many mistakes. And I show a lot of diagrams, a lot of uh, many point groups. So very likely there are some mistakes. So I first uh, apologize, uh, apologize for that. So Schrompoi uh, ferromagnetism, so probably you heard uh, something called Schrompoi, uh, Schrompoi art. So certainly this is not Schrompoi art. That represents, I guess, everybody saw that uh, nice painting and that uh, is something to do with this uh, grape vine. That's a good start. Okay, so uh, Schrompoi art is something like this. It's two-dimensional drawing, but it looks like three-dimensional. So trompe l'oeil, French word, means uh, deceive the eyes. So deceive the eyes for ferromagnetism. That's something I'm going to discuss. So what is trompe l'oeil ferromagnetism? Seemingly anti-ferromagnetic, but behaves like a ferromagnet. So a very ambiguous uh, statement. Seemingly anti-ferromagnetic. So for example, like uh, uh, state like this, it looks like more spins are canceled out. There's no net magnetic moment. However, somehow it shows uh, 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 ferro magnetic behaviors. That's something I'm going to discuss. So it's uh, very ambiguously defined. Uh, later on, hopefully, I can make it a little bit more clear. So the second part, ferro magnetic like behavior, is a little bit better defined. So, like uh, uh, as uh, Alexei discussed, so ferromagnetic behavior means uh, something like this. So net magnetic moment, and almost uh, whole type effect, Faraday effect, Mock effect, and also this uh, uh, fifth one is also important, diagonal piezo magnetism. Anomalous whole type effect, what I mean is uh, uh, any of these four kinds. Anomalous whole effect, anomalous uh, Edinghausen effect, that's uh, uh, not much discussed, but that's also important, anomalous nonst effect, uh, anomalous uh, thermal hole effect. In terms of symmetry, they are identical. So that if you have one of them, then you are supposed to have all the others. As long as uh, you can apply temperature gradient or uh, charge gradient and create uh, electric current or uh, thermal current. So uh, when I say anomalous hole effect, I mean by any of these things or all of those things. I'm going to use notation a little bit different uh, from what uh, uh, people use. I is inversion, T is uh, time reversal, R is rotation, two-fold rotation is R, and uh, other rotations like C3, C4, I'm going to uh, specify. M is mirror. And translation, I'm going to ignore. What I mean is uh, uh, the kind of phenomena I discuss, uh, whether sample is here, or I move a little bit, a little bit, it doesn't matter. So translation, in my discussion, is like a unit operator, one. That's a translation. <clears throat> so SOS, uh, something I call uh, SOS, symmetry operational similarity. What does this mean? This means we are trying to measure something on sample, and then we apply certain, uh, make a certain environment. You apply electric field or magnetic field or pressure. So I call uh, these two together ex experimental setup. So sample and experimental setup, if they have a similar symmetry, then I call SOS. So if there is SOS, 
we can get non-zero measurable. That's more or less the idea. Here there are a few important uh, things behind this. Number one, left-hand side, in other words, sample can have the same or lower symmetry than right-hand side. You cannot have a higher symmetry than right-hand side. If it does, then we are going to get zero measurable. And also, uh, these things are permutable. So we can move sample environment to the left-hand side. Sometimes you can even switch these two. So it's, they are uh, permutable. So this is a kind of an experimental list way of understanding what symmetry can do in certain materials for certain uh, phenomena. So without using coupling terms or Hamiltonian or tensors, we are trying to understand certain materials and certain phenomena. As far as I can tell, this is uh, symmetry we always consider. However, uh, this way, thinking about experimental setup symmetry, I don't think it has been done in any serious way. So first, uh, SOS with magnetization. So what we do is this. First, we figure out this magnetization. What kind of symmetry is broken? What symmetry is broken? Then the left-hand side, sample. If sample has uh, same or more broken symmetry than this one, that sample is supposed to show this uh, magnetization. That's more or less the idea. It's very simple. In fact, any sample having SOS with M, they, in terms of magnetic uh, uh, point group, they belong to so-called ferromagnetic point group, which I mentioned uh, a few times, a few times in this workshop. So it turns out that these known ferromagnetic point groups, this is very established uh, 100 years ago, they do have all broken these symmetries. Some of them do have more than these broken symmetries, but at least they do have those broken symmetries. In other words, all those ferromagnetic point groups do have uh, SOS with uh, 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 M or magnetization or with uh, those uh, uh, broken symmetries. So here, uh, I will discuss a little bit more details about these uh, ferromagnetic point groups, minus one, two bar M prime, M prime, M prime, M, as well as M and M prime. So uh, you have seen uh, something like this uh, a few times in this workshop. So if you have a square lattice, and if you have a, a kind of a structural uh, aspect, it's like uh, shown with this uh, uh, gray uh, elbisoid. And uh, if you do have a, a, a magnetic ordering, like the way uh, I do here, so collinear uh, magnetic order. If I go back here, let me emphasize that all ferromagnetic groups, uh, they do have a broken uh, I times T symmetry. In other words, P, parity, PT symmetry, P times T. PT symmetry is broken in all ferromagnetic point groups. So this one obviously has a, a broken PT symmetry. If you do P, nothing changes. If you move this guy there, nothing changes after magnetic ordering. But however, if you do a time reversal, of course, it does change. So it does have a broken PT symmetry. So this configuration is one specific kind of a PT symmetry breaking. Not just that, you, know, you can uh, uh, check this easily. If you consider this as a z-axis, they have all those broken, uh, 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 broken uh, symmetries. So what it means is that this has to belong to one of those uh, ferromagnetic point groups. Here. Are yeah. you saying that there is no paramagnetic group that has a mirror symmetry? Because you have a... Oh, you no, have no, I don't have an M, MZ. I don't, I don't, MZ is not broken. But you're saying that every paramagnet has yeah. to have a broken MX? And as well as MY, correct. Correct. All ferromagnetic point groups, if magnetization is along Z direction, these two both have to be broken. Correct. Yes. Yes. But here... One tricky thing is this. One tricky thing is this. Remember, uh, I ignored the translation in the very beginning. Similarly, when we consider one-dimensional object, like a ferromagnetic moment, we also allow something we call free rotation. So in this case, along this direction, that's the Z direction. Along Z direction, we allow free rotation. What it means is any rotation 
we consider them as a unit operate, operator, one. So with that free rotation, these have to be all broken. That's the important boundary condition. So you don't just consider symmetry. You have to also consider after this free rotation. That's the important part for this uh, one-dimensional aspect, like magnetization. <clears throat> so if I go back here, oh, I have to emphasize that. So I do have this M prime, M prime, M. So this configuration, if you, have a, if you cover completely this two-dimensional two plane, that does have exactly M prime, M prime, M symmetry that you heard uh, quite a few times here. OK. So uh, that, that's kind of a, uh, uh, my understanding. So this is, uh, does belong to ferromagnetic point group. In fact, it is M prime, M prime, M. It's one of those ferromagnetic point groups. And uh, this is a one specific way of breaking PT symmetry. <clears throat> OK, so uh, we discussed about this M prime, M prime, M. So there's a ferromagnetic point group. Uh, it turns out that so-called uh, diagonal piezomagnetism. So you squeeze, and you produce a magnetization along the same direction, either this or that direction. It's a piezo uh, magnetism. In order to have a piezo magnetism, here I switch it to x from z. Uh, uh, we have to break all those symmetries, all those symmetries. Again, with a free rotation, because we consider one-dimensional diagonal aspect. We have to break all those uh, symmetries. So they are very similar. The only difference is uh, this is C3x, C3y. We don't have a here. That's the only difference. Because when you apply stress to have this piezo magnetism, we do break C C3x, C3y by this strain so that this is not requirement anymore. So uh, their diagonal piezo magnetism is, is a little bit larger group than uh, ferromagnetic point group because we don't have uh, this, uh, uh, those two constraints, C3, X, C3, Y. Now, if you have a sample, this black box, if you have a certain current coming in, K, K represents things like electric current or optical light or it can be thermal current. On the sample, can produce uh, magnetization. So this is one of those examples that uh, uh, Alexei was discussing. It's a magnetization. So far, I discussed magnetization in the sample. We have a so-called ML term in the sample. That's a ferromagnetic point group. Now, we want to create M with certain external parameter. So in this case, uh, external parameter is uh, this uh, applied current. Applied current, we can be light or thermal current. That we may be able to create magnetization with this external perturbation. And this effect can be odd order or even order, odd order, even order of K. So sample is here. We have a current here. When you apply current, somehow magnetization is in the same direction, diagonal effect. Current coming opposite direction induced magnetization. Sometimes it can switch. Sometimes it's the same direction. One can figure out the required symmetry for these two cases. They are different. At least in chiral system, structurally chiral, no magnetism, if you apply current, that can induce magnetization. This has been demonstrated. I'm not going to go uh, into details. What are those requirements? Because we have many other things I want to discuss. The next thing I want to discuss is the so-called off-diagonal current-induced magnetization. Now, I have a current here that induces magnetization along, let's say, z direction. Current is along x direction. So x direction current is coming. And z direction, I want to create this magnetization. That is also possible that that can do also all the other way or even other way. Odd order means the current is coming here. If current direction switches, then induced magnetization also switches. That's odd order, induced magnetization. Even order means the current coming here, current coming there, induce the same induced magnetization. Even order, even order. I'm not going to discuss any of these above things. This is uh, uh, most relevant, even order one. So even order, current coming here, current coming there can induce magnetization along z direction. So in this case, one can also figure out 
the required broken symmetries. These are broken symmetries. Broken symmetries to have off-diagonal, even order, off-diagonal, current induced magnetization is you have to break uh, these symmetries. One can check easily. So for example, like uh, if I do F, uh, Rx, where is the Rx? Rx is a rotation like this. If I have a rotation like this, this direction has to switch without switching that. That has to be cleared. Otherwise, if you do have an unbroken symmetry over this, then we are not going to have this effect, right? Obviously, you can keep doing that. You can figure out all the required symmetries to have this even order of diagonal effect, okay? So these are requirements to have uh, even order current in this magnetization. That one uh, is, turns out to be same with requirements for off diagonal pairs of magnetism. In other words, you squeeze here, and then you induce magnetization that way. You can see that, right? Because k is this way, k is that way. So even though the music goes like k squared, sine of k does not matter. And k has a time reversal component, but even that is killed right, by having k squared, so that that is identical with off diagonal pairs of magnetism. You squeeze in this magnetization that way. They are identical phenomena. OK. Now we can go anomalous whole effect. We want to create odd order anomalous Hall effect. Odd order anomalous Hall effect. It can be linear, it can be third order, it can be fifth order. Symmetry can tell us whether we have a zero, odd order, even order. That's about it. We cannot tell it's a first order or a third order if it's odd order. For example, like in this case, odd order case, one can figure out. So all the other means uh, uh, this A and D, A and D. If you flip current direction, induced voltage has to be switched in anomalous Hall effect. If it is an uh, odd order. If it is even order, then when you switch this, this direction of Hall voltage it should be same. So again here, uh, we consider anomalous Hall effect, not in terms of uh, trans conductivity, uh, off diagonal conductivity or transverse current, none of those. We consider experimentally what we do. We apply voltage so that we have a current, and what we measure is just the whole voltage. That's the only one we consider. So we do consider experimental setup. And for that, uh, one can figure out exactly to have this, to have that, what kind of symmetry has to be broken. Here, I, I'm not going to discuss. So that case, all the other anomalous Hall effect, that means that when you switch K direction, then this uh, induced voltage also uh, direction does change. The bro required uh, uh, broken symmetries are those. So uh, as you can see, so this is uh, identical. Having all the other anomalous Hall effect, having even other current induced magnetization, the requirements, they are identical. And also, that's identical with having off diagonal piezo magnetism. Off diagonal piezo magnetism. So, what happens is like this you apply current, you induce magnetization, even other. So, let's say k squared here. And then that induces so you have a k squared type magnetization, and then you have a K, and then in terms of anomalous whole effect, you induce a next order effect, likely third order effect. That can happen when you have this uh, odd order effect, for example, like a third order effect. Or it can be first order effect, linear effect, if we do have a magnetization in the beginning. In other words, if you have a zero third order current induced magnetization, Zero is also even order. If you have a zero order, that is like a standard linear anomalous Hall effect. Okay, so uh, compared with uh, ferromagnetic point groups, uh, 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 certainly this is a part of this one. So uh, all ferromagnetic point groups, they do show all the other anomalous Hall effect in this symmetry argument. But since it does have a, a non-zero net magnetization, likely what we have is a linear effect rather than high order effect. Of course, in addition, there might be a high, high order effect. So we can identify all the magnetic point groups. The 
symmetry requirements, broken symmetries for ferromagnetism along, let's say, Z direction, these uh, ferromagnetic point groups having magnetization along Z direction. All these things are inside this red circle, they are the one can have uh, odd order on almost a whole pen in the XY plane, XY plane. So the relevant magnetization or magnetic field direction is along Z direction in this case. So that's the Z direction. One can figure out also along X direction. So ferromagnetic point group, and then it's a non-ferromagnetic point group, but still you can have odd order on the whole effect. And also along, uh, so X and then now a Y direction. Again, ferromagnetic point group, and then uh, odd order uh, on almost whole effect uh, without having uh, zero field magnetization. That's due to induced magnetization. Okay, so uh, if I go, uh, so this was discussed earlier. So if you have a Fe2O3, above Morin transition, below Morin transition, you measure anomalous Hall effect, right? We, we saw this, um, anomalous Hall effect, uh, uh, maybe I go back here. So uh, you can try to find this minus one and also two prime, M prime. So let's try to find it. So uh, minus one is uh, along X direction, we have a minus one. Y direction, we have also minus one. And oh, G is uh, earlier. So along, this is Z direction, that's a Z. Along Z direction, we have also minus one here. So what it means is minus one, magnetization can be any direction. It's a so low symmetry, so that means this direction can be any direction. Now, above Morin transition, the magnetic point group is two prime slash M prime, so it can be along Z direction. So this Z direction, uh, two prime M prime is here too, so it can be also X direction. However, it's not here, so it's, it cannot be along Y direction. So uh, minus one, M can be any, any direction. This magnetic point group, in principle, we can have X direction or Z direction. However, experimentally, the uh, magnetization is mostly along X direction. Uh, this is uh, almost zero. Even the symmetry allows, magnitude of this is uh, extremely small. So if you measure, for example, like XY plane, if you measure XY plane, then, uh, then uh, uh, here we have this MZ, so that you're gonna observe linear anomalous Hall effect, low Morin transition, but if you go above Morin transition, this is almost zero, even though symmetry allows. Uh, uh, anomalous Hall effect becomes very small. And uh, what Alexei discussed, uh, uh, I think there's a switching of X and Y axis. He called M Y, but in this notation is M X. So it's all consistent. His uh, Z axis is now Z Y. So that's all uh, consistent with this, uh, uh, just this diagram. So this diagram, we can learn a lot. Now, let's see, what am I supposed to, yeah, so this, uh, uh, M prime, M prime, M is here. M prime, M prime, M is here. So that we are supposed to have a magnetization along this M direction. Wherever this M without prime, that's a magnetization direction. In this case, it's Z direction. So uh, all many compounds discussed here. The cartoon is M prime, M prime, M. Orthomagnetism, collinear state. Or non-collinear state like this is also or uh, some variation of M prime, M prime, M. M is corresponds to, without prime, corresponds to right magnetization direction. Magnetolidium discussed is uh, also M prime, M prime, M. Ruthenium oxide having linear anomalous Hall effect is also M prime, M prime, M. Linear is also M prime, M prime, M. So that's all consistent. I think now I'm supposed to discuss uh, uh, M. Let me make sure. Yes, okay. So this is uh, uh, Igor discussed about uh, M as well as M prime. So M prime you see here, magnetization is along X direction, M prime there. We don't have M here. Uh, we have M here, M is now along Y direction. M prime we have again, so M, Magnetization can be also along Z direction. So Igor discussed about monolayer magnetic phosphorus, so half sulfur, half selenium. So that case, uh, 
sorry, this anomalous hole effect, that's what it means. Okay, uh, with current along one zero, zero direction, in other words, uh, uh, corresponding magnetization is a y direction. In this case, the curve was a, a y direction. Corresponding uh, magnetization is either x or uh, z direction. So uh, this is a completely consistent with the direction I showed. That was two, uh, three diagrams. Now, ruthenium oxide having different symmetry. So the, the ground state is not M prime, M prime, M. You might be able to stabilize with magnetic field by uh, 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 tilting, but ground state of uh, ruthenium oxide is uh, four prime, M, M, M prime. Four prime, M, M prime. Where is that? We have that here. So they're supposed to show all the other anomalous hole effect. Don't forget, all the other here means all the other in terms of current, non magnetic field. In terms of current, it's supposed to have a high order anomalous hole effect. So, magnetization induced, second order type magnetization is induced by current that can induce a high order, likely third order anomalous hole effect in ruthenium oxide. That's what you have. And we can we expect to have a induced magnetization, second order, by electric current. So, uh, we, Helena discussed also similar uh, data and this uh, published data. So this is strange behavior as function of magnetic field. Very, very strange. That could be result of this uh, high order anomalous hole effect. And also magnetic field may switch uh, 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 spin the air vector a little bit. And also, don't forget, this is also very much important. You can influence uh, magnetic domains by applying magnetic field. Domain, if it's two different magnetic domain, Time reversal domain is supposed to have an opposite anomalous hole effect, so that uh, when you apply large field like this, you can also influence uh, domain population. That also uh, one has to consider. So a lot of complicated thing comes in. So I would say this is actually a good hint of the existence of high order anomalous hole effect. Dichroism. So Alex again discussed the circular dichroism. One can figure out. So left circular polarized light, right circular polarized coming in, there is a difference. There's something called a circular dichroism. We can figure out easily. It's a one-dimensional phenomenon also, so we have also free rotation. One can figure out easily. These are the only broken symmetries you need. It's different from uh, the ones for ferromagnetic point group. So they are different. They are different. When, when people uh, often say uh, circular dichroism, oh, it's a ferromagnetic. But this requirement is very different. So we can compare them. So uh, these three, you can see everywhere here. Ferromagnetic point group, you see that. And also, uh, diagonal uh, uh, pairs of magnetism, C3 is gone here, also have this. Although the anomalous hole effect, we have also uh, MX, MY, as well as uh, PT symmetry broken here. So that's all here. So uh, this case, uh, 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 let me emphasize that uh, uh, well, one thing important is uh, one-dimensional phenomena like this, we have a free rotation, but non-one-dimensional uh, uh, phenomena like this, we don't have that. Because of, the, because of that, even though this is only limited, uh, a subgroup of this, but because of this difference, uh, 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 there is some uh, uh, difference, difference comes in. So, uh, okay, so I'm running on my time. So, uh, circular dichroism can be non-reciprocal. That, that is something called the Faraday effect. One can also figure out uh, non-reciprocal means so when you change the direction, uh, uh, the effect is uh, uh, different. So that one can figure out. We have to add these more broken symmetries, and uh, one can come up with this uh, complete phase diagram. Uh, 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 I, I call this Olympic diagram. Olympic diagram for Z direction. Uh, uh, more also, we discussed a lot. Very often, even of this community, there is no real distinction between Mock effect versus Faraday effect, but they are very different. Requirements are very different. So this is a requirement for Mock, and we can compare this. Anyway, the bottom line is this. So uh, we can add all this uh, 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 circular dichroism. This is a non-reciprocal, non-reciprocal circular dichroism, circular dichroism, Mock effect. We can add all this. So one thing, important thing I forgot to mention is uh, uh, diagonal linear M effect requirement is like this. Diagonal linear magnetoelectric effect requirement is like this. Here, PT symmetry is not broken. However, T symmetry is broken. So uh, these things, 
linear, diagonal linear Emmy system can have also Mach. It's not ferromagnetic. However, it can have Mach. This is a not known even in optics community. All of them is supposed to show Mach effect according to the symmetry analysis. So Y direction and uh, Z direction. Okay, so I emphasize that linear Emmy only T is broken, PT is not broken. And all these things, they have a broken PT symmetry. So P, uh, broken PT symmetry can do a lot of interesting uh, things related with magnetism. One way to break PT symmetry is so if you have a crystallographic chirality without any magnetism, crystallographic chirality, so P is broken, even though T is not broken, so P times T is broken. If you do that, then you can have spin texture in the extations. Because of that, if you do spin polarized STM, spin polarized scanning tunneling microscope, spin polarized STM, if you do that, you're going to see difference. Magnitude of a tunnel is different uh, between left domain and right domain. You can see that. I think Song Jun Lim had a poster yesterday. So I think this is really exciting in the sense that no magnetism, just a structural distortion, certain broken symmetries with spin polarized STM, atomic resolution, one can get, one can visualize broken lattice symmetries without having any magnetism. Okay, so this is a summary. So SO's approach is, uh, 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 is very intuitive, friendly to experimentalists like me. We can tell only zero order, zero, it's, whether it's a zero, one non-zero, non-zero case odd order or even order. And also we can get all those uh, Olympic diagrams, compressive view on pitch phenomena for EC and BC. Of course, this approach, we cannot tell what is a coupling term, what kind of tensor we are talking about, and the magnitude, certainly we cannot tell. But one thing I want to say is uh, probably, you heard of this uh, uh, quote, everything not forbidden is a compulsory. What it means is if symmetry says uh, uh, it can happen, it always uh, happens. It does produce always a large enough effect. So one example is like this. Uh, uh, So-called cycloidal spin order. One can prove that the cycloidal spin order has the same symmetry, magnetic order has the same symmetry with electric polarization. Somehow, all known cycloidal system, one can always measure this polarization. There is always non-zero polarization in all uh, cycloidal system. So if symmetry allows, this always happen. There is always a large enough effect one can observe. So let me stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.